In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using Photoshop in 2023 as a beginner. As you guys know, in this day and age, Photoshop is a very, very valuable skill set because all the attention that's on social media and content creation right now, there is also a lot of money that comes with that. So there is actually a huge opportunity to even make money with your skill sets if you are good at Photoshop, with content creation, building your own personal brand or anything along those lines. So hope you guys are going to be able to take away a lot of knowledge from this video and start learning Photoshop on your own as well start practicing it so maybe one day you can also monetize it so stick along for this tutorial and uh, let's get straight into the software all right so as you guys can see this is kind of what you are going to be greeted with when you first open up Photoshop so all you want to do is to click new file right here and then as you can see you will have all these uh, settings come up when you open your first new document so um, first you want to put in the uh, resolution of the image that you are trying to create in this example I'm gonna try to put together uh, kind of like a, a YouTube thumbnail um, so the settings I'm gonna use for that is 1920 by 1080 um, so I'm gonna click create and as you can see, I have opened up my first new project right here in Photoshop. So the next step that comes after this is importing. So I'm going to open up um, this little folder where I have some pictures that I want to edit. And then I'm going to basically just drag and drop my file into this. And if you have shot your footage in uh, raw in your camera, then this is gonna pop up, which is camera raw. And the cool thing here is that uh, you can actually change the exposure here uh, without you know, losing quality on your photo because, well, raw pictures actually save um, and retain a lot of data compared to JPEGs. So yeah, if you shot your photo in uh, raw, then you can do a little touch-ups here, like lift up the shadows and make sure that your you know photo is nicely uh, exposed. I'm just gonna click OK. And now it has imported this picture into my um, uh, file. So I'm going to next up um, scale this up a little bit. So when you first import uh, a picture, you can go ahead and uh, drag and drag it out like this if you want to make sure that it fills up your whole image. Now, if you are happy with your alignment, you can click this little tick and then it's going to place it for you. However, if you ever want to like resize it still or change something about the positioning, you can always just uh, make sure that right here, I'm gonna talk a bit more about this, but make sure that here in the layers tab in the bottom uh, right corner, the exact picture that you want to resize is selected and then you hit Control T or Command T on your keyboard and then this uh, kind of like option comes back again. If you want to, change like how wide it is or how it fills up the image you can also press shift on your keyboard while you drag it out and then it's going to allow you to stretch it in all sort of different ways okay so the first thing i want to cover is this layer tab right here so this is uh, something you are going to be using all the time um, here you will have all the different layers of the document that you are creating um, and you can actually toggle each layer on and off using this little eye icon so if it's toggled off it's obviously not visible on your image and if it's toggled on then it is um, you can also change the opacity of your layers right here if you want to make something more see-through you can change the opacity to a lower number and if you want to make something uh, you know less see-through then just change it to a higher opacity number you also have the blending modes here which i'm going to go a little bit more in, uh, into later on and then another thing you are going to be using a lot is this history tab so all the changes that you make to your um, image or document are going to be stored here so if you want to go back to a previous version or you want to uh, redo something and go back to a, you know later on version uh, then you can go between these uh, changes right here which is very useful in my opinion so another part of Photoshop that you are going to be using a lot is this part where you have all the different tools that you can edit your pictures with so let's get straight into those so the first tool right here which you can uh, also get by pressing V on your keyboard is the move tool so this is the tool that you can use to you know just drag and drop something to move it around or even uh, when it comes to the layers you can change the order of them move them around and so on the next tool is the uh, kind of like the selection tool and you can also right click on that and have different kind of um, uh, selection tools it's called a marquee tool uh, but I, I 
think it's easier to understand it by just calling it selection tool. So, uh, for example, if I'm, I want to, you know, select out uh, a part of my image, let's say this uh, palm tree, then using this selection tool, I can just um, click on my image and select this part, right? And now, as you can see, I made this selection. I can click Control C, Control V on my keyboard, and now I have selected it. And as you can see, it's on a new layer on top. So if I um, disable the layer below it, you can see that it has cut out just this part that I have selected on my um, image, right? Now, if you want to delete the layer, all you need to do is make sure that the correct layer is selected and then you click um, delete on your keyboard and that's pretty much it, you have deleted it, right? Okay, the next tool is the lasso tool and this is also a type of selection tool. So what you can do with this is hold down with your mouse or your touchpad when you are making the selection and uh, you know draw any type of like shape that you want. I'm gonna draw it around myself, for example, in this case. And then once you let go of the uh, lasso tool, then it has created a selection in whatever shape you do um the next tool is the quick selection tool now this is a tool that i use quite a lot it's very very useful when you are trying to select out uh, a certain subject or anything really on your image so if i wanted to for example make a selection of myself uh, even though I'm not in focus on this picture, it should work. So basically when you have the selection, uh, quick selection tool selected, um, you can add more to your selection by clicking on this plus um, thing. And then you can uh, subtract things from it by um, clicking on this minus um, labeled brush, okay? To do this, all you need to do is really just like start clicking on your on your subject. And then as you can see, it automatically kind of detects uh, most of the edges. And uh, you know, if, if it added some stuff to it that you didn't want, you can click on the minus labeled one and uh, subtract those from it. And then if you need to do some more like detailed um, adjustments to it, what you can do is zoom in on your image, uh, which you can do either using your touchpad if you are on like a MacBook or using control pl and uh, plus on your keyboard. Or uh, if you want to zoom out, you can use control and minus. If you're on Mac, just uh, always use command instead of control, obviously. And then once you're zoomed in, you want to press Q on your keyboard. And now, as you can see, basically everything that's in red is uh, not selected in your selection and everything that's in full color is inside of your selection. So to add um, something to your selection, you want to go to the brush tool or press B on your keyboard. And then um, basically here where you can see the main, the primary color and the secondary color, you want to make sure you have white and black uh, selected there. And then basically when you have white selected, you can add more things to your selection. So as you can see, as I brush over my image, it's adding more into my selection. And if you have black selected, then it's subtracting things from your selection. And you can switch between black and white by pressing X on your keyboard. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. As you can see, I want to get rid of these in the selection and I just brush over it. And uh, you know, if you are very zoomed in, you can be extremely detailed with this and uh, just have exactly what you want in your selection. Also, you can change your brush settings by going right here into the top left corner and then you can change the size of your brush. You can change the hardness, which is basically like how hard the edges of your brush are. Yeah, as, as you made those adjustments, as you can see, my brush also changes. If you want to change your brush set settings a bit faster, what I like to do is basically just right click on the image. And then as you can see, this brush menu pops up again uh, and you can change the size, the hardness. And also they have some preset brushes here uh, that you can just choose from if you want to. So once you made your selection, you want to press Q on your keyboard again to exit that mode. And then I can you know, just duplicate this layer, Control C, Control V. And um, now I have made this selection of myself. It's pretty rough uh, because I didn't really take my time on it, but uh, still you get the point. I also am going to select with the quick selection tool this uh, whole part of my image that's, uh, that's basically not the sky. So I'm gonna select it at the, the skyline 
because I want to change the sky of this image. I'm going to press Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And now, as you can see, I have three layers. I basically have like me, I have this layer uh, with everything um, aside from the sky. And then I have the bottom layer, which includes everything. The next tool that I have is the crop tool. You can use this to crop your image, whatever way you want to. I don't personally use this too much, but if you want to, it's there. The next tool is the frame tool, uh, which you can use to create uh, placeholder frames for images. Again, this is something you're probably not going to use a lot, so I won't spend too much time on it. The next one is the eyedropper tool, which you can use to select uh, an exact color from your image. So if I wanted to get the exact green from the leaves of this palm tree, I can just click that. And as you can see here in my color tab, it has selected that color. The next one is the um, spot healing brush tool. This one you can use to uh, like basically cover up any imperfections on your image. So if for example on this um, one I wanted to get rid of this tower right here, I can just basically uh, draw over it and as you can see it got rid of it. And you can use this tool um, to get rid of like pimples on a person's face or uh, any imperfections, like if you have a stain on your shirt, you can use this tool to get rid of that very, very easily. The next tool is the brush tool, um, which I'm going to demonstrate by, first of all, creating a new layer, which is also something you are going to be doing a lot. So you can create a new layer on your um, image by clicking on this plus. And now I can actually draw over this new layer that I created. So. To demonstrate the use of the brush tool, I'm going to create a, a big brush. I'm going to have like 441. I will make the hardness of this lower. And now I can actually change the color right here in the color tab that I want my brush to have. So I want it to be black in the, this example. And then I can actually just like draw over my image um, however I want to, right? And um, I'm going to change the opacity of this to a lower number. And uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how you could like make a certain part of an image darker, uh, for example, with using the brush tool. Uh, but there are so many ways you can use the brush tool um, that, you know, I could spend like a whole video just explaining that. So um, the basics you need to know are, you know, you can use the brush tool to brush over things, create selections and many more things. Um, you can change the size of it by going here and changing it here or the hardness of it. Um, you know, you can change the opacity of your brush as well, the flow of it. Um, so what I recommend you to do is to just create a new, you know, project, start playing around with it, start learning it. And uh, that's how you can really master it for yourself, in my opinion. Okay, the next tool is the clone stamp tool. Now, the clone stamp tool is also um, uh, a tool that you can use to kind of um, get rid of things on your image or uh, just to clear up some imperfections and uh, with this you can actually kind of like paint over a part of your image uh, and for by basically copying a certain different part of your image so I'm gonna try my best to get rid of this sink or I don't know what's it called but yeah um, so to use the clone stamp tool you want to go to the part of the image where you want to copy the, the texture from, and then you want to press option on your keyboard, click down on that. And now I can actually use this to brush uh, over my image. And you want to, you know, get a new sample every time you are, you are trying to create this uh, so it looks good. Um, so basically like just click on the part that you want to take the texture from, and then you can paint over your image from there. And as you can see, uh, by basically just doing this, you know, few clicks, I got rid of that sync pretty well. I mean, if it's like zoomed out, you couldn't really tell that it's edited. Obviously, um, you know, it's not perfect because first of all, this is a pretty hard texture to copy and paste. And also I didn't really take my time, but if we go back, uh, you can see how I got rid of that little sync by just doing a couple clicks. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty useful. Okay, the next tool that you are going to be using probably quite a lot is the eraser tool. So uh, you can use the eraser tool to, you know, delete uh, stuff from a layer. So I'm going to create a brush that's a bit smaller, but uh, I will put the hardness to 100. And as you can see, I can use it to uh, delete stuff from my, from my um, layer that I don't want to have there. Okay, the next tool is the gradient tool uh, and here you can actually have um, also the paint bucket tool, which is just a tool where you can 
just drop a color on your image on the whole thing uh, but the gradient tool is pretty cool uh, you can use it to create well like the name says different gradients you can choose whether you want to have a radial gradient or a linear linear one and uh, here if you go to this you can see that they have some saved uh, gradient presets so for example if i wanted to have this gradient where it goes from a solid color to a transparent one then i can just select that I will click OK on my keyboard. I will create a new layer to put the gradient on and then I can just hold down on my uh, mouse or my trackpad, drag it out and then it's going to create a gradient for me. Okay, the next tool you might be using quite a bit is the pen tool, which you can use to create different selections as well. Uh, this comes very handy, especially when you're trying to create some, you know, super um, detailed selections and you, you know, finish this selection by completing the circle and then you can uh, make a selection by clicking here or make a mask even. Uh, you can feather it, the edges of it if you want to, and then boom, you can make a selection. The next tool is going to be the text tool. So with this, you can basically add text to your um, stuff, right? So in this case, uh, this picture was taken in Turkey. So I'm going to input Turkey in there and then I'm going to make my text a bit bigger by holding down, um, you know, by, by pressing Ctrl and T on my keyboard. And uh, as you can see, as I made this selection earlier, I can actually kind of like have part of it be behind the palm tree, have part of it be behind the palm tree and uh, my heel. I, uh, you know, created this text now. If I want to, I can select it. I can go here to change the font to whatever I want to. For example, if I want it to be this font, I can just click that. I can also change the size of it here. Uh, I can also change, you know, uh, if I go down here to properties, I can change many more things, including like the, the amount of space that's between letters uh, right here, or I can change the, uh, um, the amount of space between two lines and so on. So you can do a lot of adjustments to your uh, text. Another thing you might um, going to be using a lot in the future is uh, when you right click here on your text and you go to blending options, you can add a drop shadow to your text here and uh, change all the properties of it. You can add uh, like an outer glow to your text. So if you wanted to have like a, a green glow, for example, you can do that. It looks ugly as hell in this case, but hey, there's that. You can add like pattern overlays to your text. And uh, again, you can use these uh, blending options in a lot of creative ways. Um, and this is why I love Photoshop. It just gives you like a lot of freedom to manipulate your pictures once you have learned how to use it. Play around with the blending options. I could spend a lot of time on explaining this as well, but in this video, I just want to kind of like go over the basics uh, so you get a better understanding of how to use and navigate the, the software. Okay, next one, we have the rectangle tool. You can use this to create, um, you know, different rectangles uh, and fill it up, or you can have no feel and if you just want to have like the stroke you can do that you can change the the, the width of that um, so i can create like a frame for example with this tool and uh, these in my experience are like the most used tools that i use personally the most when i'm editing uh, if anything is missing for you here you can go up to window and then here make sure that whatever tool you want to have is clicked or uh, the same way if you want to get rid of something that you don't need uh, you can do that here. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go and show you how to use the basic adjustments. So for example, if I wanted to make myself brighter um, in this image, I can go and select the layer that I'm on uh, and then go to curves. And I'm going to add some more highlights uh, to myself. And uh, I'm going to create this S-curve so I also have a bit more contrast. Um, now, as you can see, uh, as I lifted up the highlights here, I also became brighter, but you can see that the background also is brighter now. So if I want, for example, my curves, or um, you can also make uh, the exposure adjustment with this tool. Um, you can also change the vibrance. So there are a lot of, you know, things to do with the adjustments tab here, but uh, let's just say I wanted to add this, these curves, right, um, to, my, to myself. Uh, and I only want it to affect the layer that's uh, under it, which is me, then I can right click on the curves. I can go to 
create clipping mask and when I click that as you can see now it's only affecting the layer that's under it which is me so uh, if I disable it and enable it you can see that I have successfully made myself brighter if I wanted to change the sky of this uh, picture for example I could go uh, to this layer uh, add the new layer so I want to be under this one that has the background cut out and then I can even just go on Google um, search up like sky replacement I can go to images let's just download this one as an example uh, save it go back to Photoshop drag and drop it uh, make it bigger right uh, this is obviously not going to match at all um, my the colors of the of the image but hey I'm gonna make the opacity a bit lighter and as you can see now it looks a little bit better uh, but you know obviously I would take more time normally to create the image than this but I'm just trying to show you the features. Lastly what I wanted to show you is how to use the blending modes uh, so to demonstrate that I'm going to take this uh, light leak uh, image that I have and uh, basically I just downloaded this from Google and um, the way you use blending modes is you select the certain uh, layer that you want to change the blending mode of and then you go here and then you can you know scroll, scroll through these and see how each one affects your image for example i like uh, this uh, screen one for this as you can see it got rid of the back black uh, background of it and uh, made it blend pretty nice so i can add this for example um, here I'm going to flip it horizontally. I, I can add it like here. So it looks like the sun is coming from here. And as you can see, I was able to add this little light leak to my image uh, pretty, pretty fast and easily. Uh, if I want to, I can kind of like feather out the edges by creating a big brush, uh, pulling down the hardness of it and then uh, painting over it a little bit on the edges so it's not as rough. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I, I was able to add this, um, you know, light leak to it by using the blending modes here um, and um, just changing it to a different one and it didn't take much time at all okay so now we went over some of the main basic tools of Photoshop how to create a new document how to use some of the most important parts of Photoshop like the history tool uh, the different layers uh, the blending modes uh, we added text to it we changed um, the blending options as well on our text um, you know we created new layers and so on so once you have done all your editing and you are happy with the image that you created next up is to export it right so what you want to do to export it is go to file and then you want to go to uh, save a copy and then here you can uh, click on save on your computer and then you again you want to click on save on your computer and then here um, you can name it whatever you want to I'm just gonna name it um, picture and then you can choose where you want it to be saved for example my desktop and then here you can change the format so um, usually you want to save it in like JPEG or PNG I'm gonna save it in JPEG and then click save I'm gonna have uh, quality on 12 which is the maximum and then I click OK and then I have saved my image successfully and it's ready to be used as a thumbnail or whatever you want to really. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you are trying to get Adobe Photoshop, go ahead, click the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, uh, so it helps the channel a lot if you get it through that. And I will see you guys in the next one.